Hi there, this is a video aimed to show you the advanced information uh, for AQA economics uh, for your exams in May, June 2022. So this is usually, this is for year 13 students. Uh, and basically we're gonna run through exactly the topics, what you need to do, what you shouldn't do, and what you should do now, between now and your exams. Okay, so we're just gonna run through this advanced information uh, and hopefully we can realize your potential as AQA's motto states. Okay, so remember this, take this with a pinch of salt, uh, make sure that you're not fully focusing on what's mentioned here uh, and taking the information in uh, to support your studies rather to rather than basing your studies on this. All right, so again, topics here, like advanced information covers all examined topics. Um, for each paper, the list shows the major focus of the content of the exam. Topics not explicitly given in the list may appear via synoptic questions or in the case study material. There you go, that answers it. Don't fully focus on this on this document. Synoptic questions, i.e. your questions in paper three, are those that bring together knowledge, skills, and understanding from across the spec. Okay, and then advice. Uh, we don't need to run through any of this really, uh, but basically my, my initial thoughts on all of this is look at what's here, practice questions that uh, explain uh, a lot of what well, that are reflective of the topics at hand and then also look at um, the longer question answer so the 15 25 markers um, where they can come from all right so remember in especially in your paper one and two you've got those kind of three times two so six essay questions 15 and 25 markers at the end of each paper that you need to choose so there's going to be potentially a lot more topics here than maybe for edXL and OCR and the other exam boards. Okay, so let's run through paper one. Uh, so let's go markets and market failure. This is all about market uh, microeconomics. So let's just go through it. Uh, technological change, uh, market structures. Uh, if you're talking about market structures, it looks like maybe there's gonna be a big question on oligopolies and monopoly, monopoly power. So making sure you're understanding that natural monopoly uh, the oligopoly kink demand curve, collusion, uh, non-price differentiation, and maybe how that fits in with the objectives of these firms and assessing the contestability of those markets as well. All right. Um, and then again, look, I always teach, we always, through, with Edgini, we go through market structure and the efficiencies with it, okay? So dynamic, uh, productive, allocative, and X efficiencies are key when reviewing market structures because that's where a lot of the analysis or evaluation stems from. The demand for labor and the supply of labor and the relative wage rates in perfectly and imperfectly competitive labor markets. It looks like there's gonna be a big question here on, on uh, labor markets as well. So there could be a case study and it looks as though potentially th th there's gonna be a case study question here because You've got discrimination in the labor market, national minimum wage, the influence of trade unions as well. So all of that uh, might have reference to, or the, the questions in the case study uh, might reflect all of those points there. So it could be that there's a case study question on labor. Uh, distribution of income and wealth and poverty also. Um, again, normally they ask quite, quite sizable questions. On, on this, uh, it could even be linked with maybe the discrimination in the labor market and how that results in kind of this, uh, the distribution or the inequality and poverty problem. And again, look, government policies to alleviate poverty and to influence the distribution. So again, this, this looks like there's gonna be a, maybe a 25 marker um, or 15 marker uh, on, on this. Usually when they ask about government policies, it's an evaluation question. So it could be the 25 market that, that we potentially we expect. Market failure, Leslie, what market failure is gonna come up? Public goods, private goods, externalities, um, merit and demerit goods, and then the government interventions. So potentially there's gonna be a, a big question or a case study again on government intervention on externalities and public goods. So if there's an externality uh, and the fact that, that public goods as well, so maybe there's gonna be a scenario where the gov there's gonna be a big question on the government's intervening on providing the solution 
for those negative externalities or, pri or public goods, for example. Okay, and the government failure associated with that. So it looks as though the highlights would be market structures in the form of monopolies, oligopolies, um, labor markets, a big chunk here. So prepare for a large question or a large case study on that. Uh, poverty, inequality, uh, and how to alleviate that. And also uh, market failure from a public good and externality perspective. And uh, making sure that the government's intervening uh, with regards to uh, maybe privatization, regulation, nationalization, deregulation, and the, the government failure associated with that as well. Okay, so they're the main focuses. Paper two, uh, the objectives of government economic policy. All of this is to do with all of that, essentially, there's going to be a big, there'll be a, a case study or um, question, probably, probably I would say maybe a case study here uh, in terms of uh, which policy to use to maybe achieve the macroeconomic objectives. Okay, so that will be quite a big part. Uh, and there'll be maybe a, a case study on the international side of things where you've got globalization, trade, balance of payments, exchange rate systems, economic growth and development. So this one's a bit more difficult. Paper two, macro is always difficult. You can't guess anything, really. Um, what we do normally nearer the time, we start coming up with uh, kind of frequent topic areas that might be uh, the focus of the the case studies uh, and also the essay questions uh, because of the fact that we know that we can almost not guesstimate, <laughs> but we can presume what might come up in terms of topics. So if housing is an issue, housing might come up. Or if, if globalization or balance of payments or exchange rates has been an issue over the last two years, we can maybe second guess that exchange rates are going to come up as a, as a big topic area potentially as well. So with, with macro, it's very difficult. You don't, don't focus on sp any specific part. Okay, so the fact that they pretty much mentioned everything um, should be indication that you need to study everything in detail. Okay, uh, usually what happens is what kind of questions come up. Uh, usually on the second part of so you've got the essays, um, then they focus. It's interchangeable. They focus on uh, potentially one of the case studies is on kind of maybe international uh, aspects from a global context perspective. Uh, one of them is going to be UK. Usually. All of this will be in reference to maybe the UK context. All right, the 25 markers, the 15 markers, etc. It will be a mix and match. There will definitely be questions on. They, they, they do love their balance of payments, exchange rates, and trade questions. Um, again, in terms of economic growth and development as well, they can ask a big, big section on that. Maybe a case study might come up on that. But from a paper three perspective, uh, they might want to see a larger case study on economic growth and development. Um, but from a macro, just purely macro, don't second guess, focus on everything, but practice uh, exam questions that are from here, especially uh, when you're looking at uh, these and including obviously kind of macroeconomic uh, objectives as well. So from an economic growth, employment, inflation standpoint uh, is quite key. So government policies usually um, balance payments, trade, exchange rates, and economic development uh, is, is quite key uh, when practicing those essays, okay? So look into them. Uh, from a paper three standpoint, is there any, any point in looking through this? Um, no, this is why I say, look, this is why a lot of students are quite frustrated. Do we even need this? Um, because it's gonna be loads of work uh, for little effort, but we can pick and choose certain aspects. Behavioral economics hasn't come up yet. So we can expect behavioral economics to, to, to be maybe a focus here. Um, again, look, this time round, we've got perfect competition and monopolistic competition, but we also have price discrimination that falls under the, the monopoly section a lot of the time. The fact of the matter is they brought in consumer and producer surplus. Did they bring it in earlier? They didn't. And the fact of the matter that they didn't doesn't mean you don't need to bring it in. You always comment on consumer producer surpluses, even in market structures, for example. All right, so again, uh, 
the, the reason why there's so many topic areas here is because of that multiple choice section. You've got lots of questions there uh, that can come up uh, from, from any of these. Look, uses of national income data is very specific. So there's going to be multiple choice questions in a lot of these here. Um, and then you're going to have to answer the big questions. Usually, again, same thing. They, they come from uh, the large sections of market failure and market structures and uh, poverty and inequality from a micro standpoint. Uh, and it looks as though like poverty is here. Um, like the determination of wage rates uh, are here as well. And then look, perfect monopolistic competition. Uh, they'll be quite key, maybe in the bigger questions as well. And then from a macro standpoint, uh, fiscal and supply side. So it looks as though uh, monetary policy isn't needed here, uh, but finance comes up, the financial uh, sector comes up. Uh, and then you've got trade and economic growth and development. So what I would do here is take this with a pinch of salt again, as I mentioned. Uh, don't focus on what's here um, in terms of emitting what you need to learn that's not here. So for example, if monetary policy isn't here, it doesn't mean you don't need to bring it up. It doesn't mean that indirectly you're going to bring it up as your second point maybe on one of your essays. Just because uh, just because um, certain topic areas in paper one aren't here. So for example, just because there isn't uh, taxation that's come up here, well, government intervention has come up, but just because taxation isn't mentioned here doesn't mean that you're not going to use it. It doesn't mean you're not going to not draw the diagram. You will, most likely. Okay, just because subsidies aren't here doesn't mean you're not going to draw it. Okay, it doesn't mean you're not going to mention it. So don't eradicate stuff that's not here topics that aren't here. Focus on what is here and supplement it and support it using the topics that aren't here. Basically what that means is practice questions that are maybe specifically designed and, and that come out of here. So you're not question spotting per se, but you're you're giving your 78% of your time dedicated to questions that ask directly about these certain areas. Moving on. Uh, in terms of what you should do between now and then is what I just mentioned. Um, making sure that you're in constant communication with your teachers or with us at EdGenie uh, in terms of understanding these areas. Okay, so if these are mentioned, make sure that you're prioritizing. If there's any areas that you don't know, say you're struggling with economic growth and development, say you just don't get inflation and deflation prioritize it. Make sure that you're concentrating on your weaknesses because your strengths potentially will be reinforced uh, using, using that kind of active recall in terms of testing and, and so forth. So focusing on these areas are, are, are key and prioritizing it, making sure that you're not losing the, the battle with uh, not understanding uh, the, the, these topic areas. Okay, hopefully that helps and I'll see you in the next video.